Probably 50% of the reloading questions I get these days revolve around expander mandrels. Since this is a question that only new reloaders would ask, it's proof to me that new reloaders are joining our ranks in record numbers right now, which is a good thing. And with the price of ammunition right now, why wouldn't they want to join our ranks? So this video was made to answer their questions. Expander mandrels are simply metal pins that expand case necks on sized pieces of brass in order to achieve the desired neck tension. These are used instead of expander balls on sizing dies and must be performed as a separate step after sizing the brass. So the newbies out there are probably wondering, why would you take the expander balls out of your dies and, you know, and make things more complicated? Well, that depends on how serious you are about making highly accurate ammunition. You know, some hunters really don't care. I do. Expander balls are the largest obstacle to producing consistent loads, in my opinion. You know, those expander balls overwork brass. They give inconsistent neck tension. They mess with concentricity. And the manufacturer's specs on these things are just all over the damn place. So none of my dies for loads where accuracy really matters have expander balls in them anymore. Mandrels help the reloader achieve very consistent loads and they replace these expander balls. To remove the expander ball assembly, just unscrew the top of the sizing die. And remove the whole assembly. You know, uh, I don't even need this decapper because I decap my fired brass af you know, uh, before I tumble it. That way the uh, primer pocket gets clean. So this decapper pin isn't even necessary for me. And I just uh, unscrew it and take this whole assembly out and put it back in the die box. And I'll probably never use it again. Um, to decap my brass, I use, uh, you know, the Redding Universal Decapping Kit. You know, it comes with a short and a long case in there. So it basically covers all of your decapping needs. And uh, that's what I use. So once you buy some expander mandrels, you're going to need a die body to hold the mandrel in it so you can attach it to your press. Companies that sell uh, these mandrels also sell die bodies for their mandrels, and some of them are interchangeable. Um, you need to be mindful that there's different size die bodies, so make sure that the, uh, the die body you buy is compatible with your mandrel and your cartridge size. 21st Century has a great selection of die bodies. Just make sure that your die body allows for some amount of free float in there. That's what I like about these 21st centuries. You can hear this. Hear that rattling in there? That's because that, uh, that mandrel pin in there is free floating. And let me go into a little bit more detail on these different types of 21st century um, mandrel dies. And basically you have the short ones for your short action cartridges. And then the long one for your long action cartridges. And then they have these uh, nifty, and these are made out of like heavy duty stainless steel. And then uh, you have these lightweight aluminum ones with this little inspection window in it. And you can see, you know, this is a, for, this is a 30 caliber expander arbor. That's uh it gives me just over about two and a half thousandths of neck tension. So I put that in there. Screw the top on it, and you can see it free floats in there, so it's not going to mess with your uh, concentricity or cause run out while you're expanding the case neck. And that window's cool because you can see that case going up into there, and it bottoms out right there, and you don't want it to bottom out 
on your on your mandrel so you want to set it to where you know right at the edge of that window you know and i have that much leeway i have a you know about uh three sixteenths of an inch to, of of uh safety margin right there so with these windows i usually uh set it to where i can see it go right there and that's where i screw the die down to and set it so these are super easy to set up with the window in them so to give you an idea of where using an expander mandrel fits into my reloading process, let's just pretend I'm reloading once fired brass. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get that brass and I'm going to decap it all. I'm going to decap all the brass I plan on reloading. Then after I decap it, I'm going to tumble it. I don't know what your method is, but uh, I tumble in stainless steel pins these days. So you're going to tumble that brass, and I decap it first to get the primer pockets really clean. Then uh, the next step, after you have your clean, dry brass, would be to uh, to size it with a sizing die that has the expander ball removed out of it. Then you're going to uh, uh, chamfer your case mouth, and then wipe your case completely clean. Then after that is when I use the uh, expander mandrel. I'll run it through the expander mandrel at that point. And then after I do that, my brass prep is basically completely done. And I'm going to load a primer into the case. Then I'm going to put the powder charge in the case. And then uh, I'm going to seat a bullet. And that's how the expander mandrel fits into my reloading process. As I explained earlier... Several different companies make expander mandrels and die bodies. The most popular, of course, are the 21st century offerings, but Sinclair and KMNM both make mandrels and die bodies for their manuals. But this is where the main confusion starts. Everybody asks, what size do I buy? Well, the answer to that is that it depends on your brass and your desired neck tension. The mandrels you buy will be specific to the brass that you use because different manufacturers of brass, their brass has different properties. Some brass springs back more than others after resizing. But uh, I like the uh, 0 .0015 to 0 .0025 mandrels for my loads. Lapua brass seems to have a lot more spring back. And so I'll sometimes run a one and a half thousandths mandrels for that brass. With uh, with other brass like my Nosler brass, the uh, two thousandths mandr mandrels usually give me the neck tension I want. But uh, in the end, my goal is usually to have two to three thousandths of neck tension, regardless of mandrel size. So I use a mandrel that gives me that. And you can see here, this is uh, for my twenty five out six. Most new reloaders get very confused on the uh, 21st century website. But you need to first go up to the upper left-hand corner and hit the Buy Online tab and wait for the page to load. Sometimes it takes a while. The first type of mandrel are the caliber-specific mandrels, which can be ordered in a wide range of sizes for calibers between 22 and 338. These come in half thousandths increments, which allow you to fine tune neck tension to exact expectations. I use these for my match ammo. The second type is the standard expander mandrel. These are all one thousandths undersize, and that's the only option you have with these mandrels. These are great for bench rest loads and target loads, but I wouldn't use these for hunting because they don't give you much neck tension. The third type is what they call a turning arbor. These turning arbors are two thousandths undersized. These are great for hunting loads and reliably give two to three thousandths of neck tension, depending on brass. Buy these when you want to make hunting or PRS loads. They also have mandrels and turning arbors for larger calibers. I use these for my 375 and 416 loads. You also have three materials to choose from. The stainless mandrels are the standard offerings. The downside to stainless 
is that you're going to need to use some kind of dry lube on the cases to keep things consistent and to not gall or overwork the brass. They also offer titanium nitride. These are slicker than the bare stainless mandrels and we require less lubrication. Some people don't lube with these at all on clean and properly sized cases, but some need to. Then you have the black nitride mandrels, and these require no lube in a clean and properly sized case. These are expensive, but they're the Mercedes Benz of the mandrel world. These are my personal favorite, but they don't offer them in a lot of calibers I shoot for, so I end up using the stainless or the titanium nitride for some of the uh, calibers I use. And a little pro tip I'm going to give you when using these expander mandrels is after you put the case up one time to size the neck and bring it back down, I usually give the case a little spin, about a half a turn, and bring it back up and do it a second time. And a lot of people don't even spin it, but what I found is running it through the mandrel twice really locks in that neck tension and minimizes variance in brass spring back. So you really get super consistent neck tension by running each piece through twice. If you could only buy one mandrel for your particular hunting load, I'd buy a mandrel that was two thousandths undersize. The one thousandths mandrels, you know, like the Sinclair offerings, are great for bench rest and precision shooting, but I like a little bit more neck tension for hunting loads. Like I said, my goal is to have two to three thousandths of neck tension in my hunting loads. And when it's all said and done, the uh, the two thousandths mandrels usually work for me. You know, usually uh, they're usually two thousandths under bullet diameter and you usually get another half thousandths or so of spring back in the brass. So it puts you right around that number that I want to be. And, you know, and I'll admit it, using a, an expander mandrel adds another step to your reloading process. And you might not like that, but if precision is important to you, it's worth it, in my opinion. And, you know, I've been loading and shooting long enough now that I know that consistent neck tension is probably the biggest factor when it comes to consistent loads. You know, and it comes down to expectations. And to tell you the truth, I have very high expectations of my ammunition uh, and my rifle and myself. You know, I expect hunting rifles to shoot sub MOA. And I demand that the ammo I feed it be absolutely consistent across many variables in the field. You know, good enough just isn't good enough for me. When I put my crosshair on something, that's what I, that's exactly where I want my bullet to hit. You know, some of you consider a bullet hitting in a general area is acceptable or the old pie plate accuracy is acceptable, but I don't. But I'm honest and objective enough to concede that the benefit of using expander mandrels aren't worth it for, you know, they're not worth it for everyone. If you never shoot over 200 yards, you might not notice the effects of inconsistent neck tension in your hunting loads to any discernible extent. You know, if having half MOA groups instead of three quarter MOA groups isn't important to you, or if you don't care about extreme spreads, you know, don't bother with that extra step. But to me, loading highly precise ammunition is more than just a personal expectation or OCD behavior. I feel like I owe it to the animals that I hunt to give them my very best every time I pull that trigger. I take solace in knowing that out of all the variables that can go wrong during a hunt, my ammunition is never going to be one of them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on expander mandrels for hunting. <laughs> Basically, expander mandrels for hunting uh, ammunition. You can reach me with any questions or comments at Desert Dog Outdoors at gmail.com. As always, thank you for watching and good hunting.